All right, shalom, make your man. Y'all about your shy, broke a thumb to the dear brothers out there, little man of sisters, worshiping the Heavenly Father in spirit and in truth. And that only goes to those out there who really 100% locked in, you know, fight for their salvation, understanding that in the near future, in these coming days, you're finna be tested. Your emotions is finna be tested. You know? And do you know if you're gonna pass the test? You don't know. Nobody don't know. We, none of us know. None of us brethren know. So what we do now, we show maxed out obedience to prove that we want salvation of the Lord so that when he does come back, he see fit. He see fit. All praises to y'all by Shemel Shah, the bonds and apostles over there, Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the elect. You know, the spirit of hey, Yabba Shemel Shah got me in a deep thought. You know, especially when, you know, things ain't just ain't going right for you. That's when the spirit really be have you thinking upon, you know, the, the seriousness of everything. You know what I mean? All of us, brother, we want to get the freak out of this kingdom. And, um, you know, that's the emotions that we supposed to have as the scriptures right, written in uh, second, um, second Andrews chapter 15, it talks about how uh, just spirits is going to be complaining continually. So the, the spirit that we, that's on us, brethren, that you see when we basically going in and uh you know we you know we we speak we speak with much confidence the spirit that you see is the spirit of prophecy the things that the lord said that would would befall the spirits of the elect men lord willing i'm part of that lord willing that us brethren are but the spirit the reason why i'm even um doing this little quick in transit because i'm thinking about Something that the brother, the head brother Mwatazak in the camp. Something that the brother um brings brother back brings brethren back to reality with. Something that he says that brings us brings all everybody back to reality. And that reality is that it's all about the Israelites. And more importantly, it's about the elect at the end of the day. At the end of the day. It's about the Israelites and it's about the elect. And that brother always says that because one of the things that we're witnessing is that Esau Edom, he provides this information out there. He does all this stuff. He does all this. He does the scare tactics because that's a part of what he wants to generate, fear. You know? He says he's going to do this and that, you know, and they're going to be successful and they... They encourage themselves in the evil matter as is written in Psalm 64. You know, these devils do all this stuff, but at the end of the day, remember, it's about the elect. It's about the Israelites, and more importantly, it's about the elect. The scriptures talk about Esau's plan and what he he, this goddamn devil, what he devises what to do. The scriptures talk about all of it. But the scriptures also talk about how. The Israelites is going, it's going to be a time of Israelites trouble, Jacob's trouble, Israelites trouble. It talks about how um, he should be spoiling and destroying those who fear the Lord. You see, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> you see this Edomite is leaving out, he's leaving out a portion of the, of the Heavenly Father's movie, his prophecies. He's only showing you his half. You see? But we, that's when the brethren come in, starting with the apostles of the Great Millstone, in the spirit of Yah Bashem El Shai, all praise to Yah Bashem El Shai. The spirit of the Lord revealing the uh, the secrets onto who he revealed it to, as it is written in Amos 3 and 7. You know, the Lord has revealed those secrets, and now the, us, we understand the full spectrum. We don't just have half the circle. We have the full spectrum between what's supposed to happen between evil and what's supposed to happen between uh, or between good. Both sides. And all this guy, this damn Edomite man, 
I've been considering. He just had his, he just world held this world <coughs> economic forum meeting. He just held that because that's the hot, hot thing going on right now in the world. He just held that and he, he had all his plans. He talked all his, man, shut your ass up. And I'm telling you just like that, you know, because Esau is doing nothing but his portion. The Heavenly Father has a grand movie in this. And we letting y'all know that even though Esau was sitting there making these plans and this and that and this, hold up real quick, nigga. The lick, first off, the lick gotta be sealed before any destruction happen. happen. Before any destruction take place, Revelations the seventh chapter says the elect have to be sealed. Matter of fact, I'm finna pull over to, to grab that one. Let me grab that real quick, man. <coughs> Excuse me. This book of Revelation chapter seven, verse one, it says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on, the, nor on any tree. So this is John receiving revelations and the understanding is this. John was, John's, the winds and the winds in Revelation 7 and 1 is talking about the destruction that's going to come. All right. The, the, the angel was told to hold the winds, hold the winds until what? It said, it said uh, should not blow on the earth or the sea nor any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea nor the trees, till we have sealed the set, sealed of our power in their, I'm sorry, sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads of our God. In their foreheads. So this guy, he can't, the Heavenly Father has ordered him. He can't do, he cannot release the destruction that he's planning until Yahweh Shemel Washai sealed the elect in their foreheads, man. When it said hurt not the earth, the, the trees is literally talking about um, the inhabitants. And also trees in the scriptures, because things are twofold. As Apostle Gabor explained to us many years ago, the truth is like onions. All right, it got layers. The trees also represent men. All right, there was a man that the Heavenly Father, Son Yahweh Shai, cured his eyesight, and Yahweh Shai asked him what he see, and he said he see men walking as trees on the earth. Man is man. When you go jump back to the Book of Genesis. Men was living long as trees. Methuselah living the longest being 969 years. You see? So, <clears throat> so, you know, at the end of everything, Yahabah Shemel Shai is the one that's controlling and orchestrating all this. And he he's not just moving the left hand, he's moving the right hand too. You gotta be paying attention what's going on on our, our side, more importantly. You know, I've heard, I've, I've, I've read before, and I've heard brethren say, and I've read in, in, in history that, you know, you the uh, a, a good strategy is to know your enemy, to know him, you know? So then it allows you to be able to maneuver in the right and in in make all the right moves. You know what I mean? But hold up real quick. You got to first know what's at home. You got to be paying attention what's going on amongst your people. What is the and, and what I mean by that is who what the apostles of Great Millstone is talking about? What is the brethren talking about, man? You know? Are they still out there on the streets? Are they still teaching? Those things. You know? And that's what's be that's what that's what's left out. That's what's left out when you get when you're hearing 
Esau report the news or you're seeing Esau um, hold meetings or you whatever it is, man. It's all about us, fool. Isaiah, Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah the 34th chapter. And talk about this is the year of, of the recompense of Zion for the controversy of Zion. I'm man, I'm butchering it a little bit. Matter of fact, I'm gonna stop again. Forgive me. But I'm on I'm on a deserted street, so you brother don't even have to um you don't even have to worry in that type of fashion, man. <clears throat> I'm on a deserted ass street where nobody at. There's Isaiah 34 and um Isaiah 34 and 8, it says, For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of his recompense for the controversy of Zion. For us. You know? The hatred, the, the, these elites of this society and all these different, uh, their puppets and the faces of their, their organizations and their meetings, all them, all them, them assholes, they hate us, man. They hate us.